I didn't know it was going to happen like this. But I did tell you that I was going to be working some events, right? And I've said all the time, I've took the mantle of... I retire all the time and then come back all the time from Vince. I now own it. It's me. And um, I did say I was going to do some. And I did say that uh, if you ever see me doing events again, it's like I'm just doing it for the money. <laughs> and um, that's true. But also opportunities to work with people I like, you know, because there's still a lot left on my old bucket list. And, um, you know, I always said if I got a chance to work with Duncan at a CS event uh, again, we would do that. And if I got to work with some of the cool Dota talent, I would do that. And so anyway, two announcements for two events on the same day, right? Which was like, you know how I feel about fucking talent announcements. I hate talent announcements. I wish we wouldn't do them. I understand in this instance why we're doing them, because it's kind of like a novelty. But uh, I hate it, because it's just, it's just a means for you to be horrifically abused by people on the internet. Uh, that's all it's for. It just every time there's a talent announcement, there's a corresponding Reddit thread or a forum thread, and everyone's in there going, "I hate that cunt. I really like that cunt because they're better than this cunt." And yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like just none of this needs to be said. It's like you, you know, in in sports, they don't announce who's going to be calling the game in advance, like weeks in advance. You know, it's just like another broken thing uh, with esports. But anyway, we'll start with the first. He's back. And what's he doing? He's doing this. He's doing the Eliza Esports Espoo 2024. Now, I am going to have to talk to some of the Finns on my Discord and learn how to pronounce it because I can't call it Espoo. That doesn't seem like something I'm going to do. And so you can see it's got it all, right? It's got me looking mean without my glasses there, contacts in. It's got Thorin looking like that meme of that guy, the world's most interesting man. That one. It's got Maui Snake. They said he was ready for McDonald's. Back now, doing all the events. What blacklist? And it has got, of course, the man. <laughs> the man with the mechanical fists. It is James Banks. Round of Banks in the chat. Has there ever been a more... <laughs> this is like a fucking Legion of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> broadcast talent it's actually crazy so obviously heads are gonna get smashed um and so just to talk a little bit about it seriously before you know where this is going it's one of those richard reads reddit stream <laughs> just out of shit just washed just mining reddit for content it's fine obviously we were talking about this for a while behind the scenes and you know me and duncan have obviously took a very uh, vocal anti-saudi money stance that makes working with a lot of entities quite difficult also in our capacity as journalists or pundits or you know whatever you want to call us podcasters <clears throat> we've obviously criticized a lot of tournament operators as well in I, I will add including pgl who i work with you know we were quite harsh after uh, 2021 harsh but fair uh, in our criticisms and you know it, it it's such a petty industry that ultimately if you criticize a to because an event was subpar and everybody can see it very often that just puts you on the outs forever now if you criticize the money you're on the outs just forget about it like you you don't exist you know and so it's obviously we're super limited in the kind of events we can work because of the stances we've t taken and it really looked like after 2021, you know, I think, you know, Duncan would be the first to say this. I think he kind of accepted he just might not work another event. I mean, he put out tweets to that effect saying, you know, I might never work another CS major, another big CS event. But, you know, I've worked all of these. If you go look at my Liquipedia page and I'm really happy with the work and the contribution I've made. You know, because obviously we're not like a real sport in the sense that somebody like Duncan would just be on a broadcast like, until he was 60, 65, which, you know, the fucking brain rot gen alpha morons go, he's 60 now? Look at him, he even looks 60. You know, idiots, of course. So, you know, that that's how it would work. You would go through until you physically couldn't do the job anymore. It's not really like that because everything's freelance and tournament operators come and go and games come and go and it's got a really young audience and young audience are immediately inherently dismissive of anything anyone like over 25 has to say. I mean, like I remember like when fucking there was like this weird TikTok trend of like, you know, 
choose choose milf or something was going on on tiktok and they were just posting pictures of women who were like 28 <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck is going on with you what is going on with your generation so anyway no concept of time or scale of course you can see obviously me and duncan are going to be working together this will be the first event we'll have done since 2021 and that was the first event we've done together since maybe even e-league i'm not too sure it's all a blur so obviously looking forward to that it was worth coming back to essentially do by the numbers uh live uh but also as well i've never done an event with maui snake um never done one and we've obviously been uh, you know kind of when i when i'm when i was in the inns he was coming up and then when i was on the outs he was getting the events and then blah 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 so i'm hoping that that's something that becomes normal because i have said this many times i think maui snake is actually a really really good a analyst and i think reddit is as always is fucking stupid reddit doesn't understand like reddit criticizes analysts for not understanding the game without being able to justify why they get to do that when they have even less experience than the analysts they criticize you know they did it with launders launders used to do demo reviews and everyone would be like but why are you reviewing the demo you don't know what you're talking about well on the totem pole of knowledge where the fuck are you mate you're not even part of the poll. You are under the soil, you fucking dickhead. Like, that's where you are. So your criticism is utterly worthless. It is piss against the wall. That is all it is. And so Maui actually is a pretty, um, I think, high-level technical analyst. Like, if you listen to when he breaks down, you know, gameplay stuff, it's clear he knows what he's talking about. He's watched the demos. He's watched the games. He understands player tendencies and everything else. So I think it'll be a nice contrast because the way this is being build is this is the edgelord desk and it's like no it's we've got duncan who is really good with narrative work and we've got maui snake that's really good with um the the more minutia technical stuff and obviously that's a blend that you always kind of want to have on a desk plus they work with each other because they do podcasts together so I'm expecting really good chemistry on the desk. And, of course, we have a stage host as well. It's a real small, tight crew. So, no doubt, Banks will be getting involved uh, at various points. Uh, so, and obviously, worked with Banks in, in Copenhagen. And he likes the fact that we put him in New Vegas. And he likes the fact that we've got Smash Their Heads in, Smash Their Heads in, and a Banks emo. He likes all that. So uh, uh, we'll get to it in a second, but people on Reddit were like saying, Richard Lewis and James Banks at the same event. Who come up with that? I did. We just did it in Copenhagen, guys. What are you talking about? There's no beef. There's no beef at all. I'm too old for beef. Yeah, uh, you know, so. But anyway, um, so this is going to be the event. And, you know, look, it isn't just Reddit, although I am going to be reading uh, Reddit, of course. Uh, it's not just that. There were lots of crazy reactions on Twitter as well. So I'm going to just get to some of those. And then we'll look at the Reddit thread. We had this. This was this was a good one. Most toxic lineup you could have gathered. I pray Banks makes it out with his sanity intact. And just to show, you know, finger not so much on the pulse as all the way up his ass. As deep as the second knuckle. Uh, I consider all of these guys my friends. Rich and Thorin, since my career began, there'll be a lot of great moments, laughs and banter, and one hell of a good show that I can guarantee. You see? Not a problem. But yeah, pray for banks, apparently, is uh, is is, <laughs> is what people are saying. We had, I, I don't know, I, I think what this person is trying to say is they're going to boycott the event. Feel free. Uh, your view, I doubt, will be missed. This is my personal favorite for Twitter for being the most unhinged. For context, get back to the announcement so you can see the announcement of, you know, there's me, there's Thorin, and there's Maui. And uh, that's the reply. Which, listen, I don't mind because uh, I get to be Stalin in this example. So Thorin is Hitler. And Maui is Mussolini, but I get to be Stalin. Everyone likes Stalin, so <laughs> apparently. So so I'm all right with it. So anyway, it it went on Reddit that I was back in the game. And as I said, I was like, they're not going to... Uh, there's no chance that PGL and Eliza Esports will uh, announce on the same day. There's no chance that that would happen. So I get like a double dick of fucking... <laughs> filthy horrible abusive dms but that is indeed what happened and so you can see let, let's go into it right 
I, I, we really should have prepared a bingo card for tonight's stream, but I didn't have time. Okay, but let's do racism, Breitbart, Hell in a Cell, uh, doesn't know the game, is a silver or a golden over, block me on Twitter, y you know what it is. And so, if, if you wherever you are in the world, um, you know, if you're of age, uh, you maybe pour yourself a drink, play a little drinking game, safe, healthy normal drinking game where you know you have a little sip of your drink uh, every time one of the bingo card uh comes up and let's just see <laughs> where where we get to and, and look there was some positive stuff i'm only going to really tunnel in on the negative because that is how uh it works uh but you'll you'll see um by the way feel sorry for this guy he went with adventure you know it was like hot take point made the live event and everybody liked that and then he went with hawk tour spit on that thing point made and got downvoted because that memes played out he tried <laughs> he did try so unfortunate really anyway i don't know what this means i'd like to see them mingle with the esl talent rather than their normal crew two battle hasn't managed to get better teams to attend this year two spots left but everyone is at rio an event starts only a couple of days after that and so not much hope uh, there and it's like you, you know they've hired us specifically to do the concept of the desk like much like pgl when they did stockholm brought back you know the um the the older uh the, the old boys club you might say uh, and that was the kind of concept of the event um and that's what we're doing here you know they they hit us up like months ago and said like you know how would you feel if you came out and um you know essentially you and duncan did like you know the package was back and we had all that banter and that stuff and i was like yeah fuck yeah count me in um it's gonna be after another event so october is gonna be pretty busy for me but let's do it you know um and obviously you know this is one of these things as well where it was like look I'll lower my day rate and everything just so we can do it because I know you're not like an ESL with money to burn. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're we doing it for the love of the game. We're doing it for the, the, the fun of it. I don't know if ESL staff w would be there at an event like this. Um, there's a lot of assumed exclusivity, even if it isn't official, which I get it. That's what adds value. That's what gets people paid. So anyway, Thorin and RL won't work for ESL because it's against their morals. The choke master refusing blood money. Oh, there we go. Take a sip. Uh, there's still hope in the world. Thorin and RL won't work for ESL because ESL doesn't want them to. Let's not pretend like they're turning down ESL for every event. Now, that uh, obviously, as we know, they certainly don't invite me now. I wouldn't make that claim. But they, pre-Saudi, before I said I, I can't, we all, I've told it many times, we, we were really talking about doing a really sick version of Pro League, which is the version they got now. Just I would have been in it. And uh, obviously, I said, no, I can't now. Uh, which, agreeable broom slayer, that weirdo who just posts about how the game's broken and shit, but still plays it. 10 hours a day like a fucking loser says uh, if they were critical of saudi money they wouldn't even cover cs there you go everybody who doesn't take saudi money in cs has to be ignored and fucked over uh because uh esl took saudi money there you go that's the logic that's the brain cells um firing there esl and everyone else cut ties long before the saudis were in esports i you know i don't know no one's ever officially cut ties with me until now. I guess I'll have blacklisted me even as a journalist. Um, so I don't know where they get that from. RL and Thorin have morals. Good ones. And then this guy, this is a, this is some loser from Dota 2 who every time I mentioned has to instinctively do it, get ready for a drink, post about baby the baby loader, how I choked him. So RL had morals enough to start strangling a random person in his original post. He said it was a co-worker. I strangled a co-worker on the desk. That's the story he's got to in his diseased brain. Uh, RL had morals to start strangling a random person over a disagreement. If you want to go down that road and regularly make statements of painting himself as the saviour of the scene. I'd, again, urge anybody to find where I've declared myself the saviour of the scene. Uh, and then, obviously, 
good old moist shart reuse. Uh, or is that meant to be shart truce? But it looks like shart reuse. Never forgiving alt right global homo shill Richard Lewis for when he performed a late term abortion on Baby Loader, swinging him around in circles by the neck until launching him into a nearby explosive device like a Super Mario 64. All right. So, true. All true. Got me. Um, then, if you can't get the most basic of facts right, not sure why anyone uh, should trust your version of events. Sorry for appealing to authority of the first-hand account of the situation that happened in 2015. Uh, I guess not being aware that they were actually not co-workers makes me an absolute fool. The situation is then even worse uh, as a professional just happens to strangle someone over words instead of removing themselves from the situation. Again, his head was like here. Um, and he wasn't strangled because a strangle is this. All right, I've got some experience with that too. Uh, that's a strangle. Um, that is get the fuck away from me. That is you are in my space. Um, and yes, it left marks, but that's what you're trained to do. You know, if you're a doorman, you know, you get trained to like create space. If someone gets close, you, boom, you do that. For the punishment I've got for the crime, you would have honestly thought like I fucking seriously hurt this guy. Uh, it's just crazy. You don't have the right to start strangling someone just because he's in a backstage area for talent. Uh, the situation is done. R. Lewis strangled a person in 2015 and can't be championed as a champion of morals. That's all I wanted to highlight. All of what you're yapping about. So we're dealing with, uh, I mean, either you're, if you were around in 2015, you're too old to be using the word yapping. And if you weren't, this is why you're totally clueless. I think you're just mentally ill, though, but whatever. Um, is that no one should care about, as if it's justifying using violence as means of removing yourself from a situation. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. So we've got that one out of the way. People are complaining about the teams, uh, but obviously it overlaps with IEM Rio. Alu's going to be playing there, apparently. So I'm kind of like looking forward to seeing him again. Been a long time. The man that broke the sweet child's back in Hell in a Cell. Talent lineup more venomous than a black man, but fair enough. There it is. There's the Banks comment. Getting Banks and RL as talent at the same event. Whoever chose this is either very funny or very stupid. Like we've done a number of events together. I don't understand. Then there was this. Somebody repeated my point that uh, fans, esports fans, aren't interested in high-level analysis because they're not. They pretend they are. They feel like they have to LARP as if they are. Because remember, esports fans are players, and players are delusional. You know, Dunning Kruger up the ass, and they fucking think they're better at the game than they are. So by extension, they like to present that they know more about the game than they do. And so if anybody, they're not really interested in it. They're not even interested in learning about the game. That's why educational content doesn't do well. It just never has, never will, never goes to the front page of Reddit, never gets lots of views. You know, they'll watch a pro player stream and tens of thousands will queue up for that. Suppose that's pseudo educational, but ultimately they don't care. And so when you make your desks entertaining, people stick around. I've seen it because this guy here, Astro Keck, says, can you post a viewer number data you're referring to? Me worked dozens and dozens of events. I know that if you make the desk interesting and fun, more people stick around and watch than if it's just replays and people talking over replays. Fact, I've seen it. Since when they have any understanding of the game, somebody says, well, I mean, like, they've been following the game very closely and have been friends with professional players for over 20 years. Crazy, you guys think they know anything. Uh, what have they said exactly that makes you think they don't? RL demanded to dop Blade... Thorin to drop Immer. Now, I never said to drop Blade. Again, what I did say, uh, not a surprise, he's a Na'Vi fan. Also, a Na'Vi fan using the name of a Na'Vi player. You're not a fucking loser. What I did say was Blade was uh, underachieving when they were losing a gambit all the time in the online era. And they were just a glorified flip side and they weren't playing to their strengths. I was absolutely right about that. They changed and they went on to win trophies. So, I don't know. Blade obviously agreed with me, but whatever. And everybody said to drop Imma because Imma was shit. <laughs> so, you know, uh, seems to be reasonable. It's not just that. They talk about CS like some gold Novas. Have a drink. Have a drink, guys. Who don't even know what knowledge they are missing. They can only compare stats. What have they said exactly that you think they know anything about CS? Right? repeats it again they literally just spout controversial stuff to generate clicks uh, i should have put that in the bingo card as well and he just keeps asking for examples of me 
and Thorin knowing about the gang, which if we were to present them, you would just say they're wrong. Checkmate, atheist. So lots of positive comments. Right? This was funny. How can anybody like that guy even a little bit? All he ever does is shit on achievements to farm interaction from people. He doesn't even believe what he is saying. Insincere and ill-intended. Now, who's that? <laughs> is that? It could be all of us. I like to think this is a genius meta comment about Reddit. And he could he's talking about any of us or all of us. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is the good stuff down here. Uh, this event is going to fry my brain from confident stupidity. Looks like they deleted their account. So, I uh, don't know. Can't wait for Thorin to shit on everyone without any good reason or insight. Dude is 100% there to stir drama and nothing else related to the game. Worst talent lineup ever. I thought Thorin fucked off to Russia or something. I remember reading that comment earlier today and I was like, is, th is this where we're at with the fucking fan fiction now? Thorin was a Russian asset the whole time. He was a Russian agent the whole time. And he's defected to Moscow. This is where we're at. This is how fucking broken your fucking brains are. Because you know Russia bad, Thorin bad. I thought Thorin... Like, I can't... Uh, you know, I can't be held responsible for that type of mental illness in the community. It's ridiculous. Uh, easy permamute. Worst talent lineup ever again. Sad. <laughs> Won't be watching that then. Somebody asks why. Uh, neither Thorin nor Richard know shit about the actual game. I don't see them adding any value as analysts. I'm a host. <laughs> For a million. It says it on the announce. Host. Host. You know how like... You're a host for the fucking brain worms <laughs> that make you incapable of distinguishing between these two roles. I'm the host on the desk and not a fucking analyst. Ten years ago, it was not controversial to say Thorin and R. Lewis are not experts at the game and shouldn't be brought onto the desk. How has community sentiment gone the opposite direction when they're less informed than ever and more disliked than ever? Some allegations about Thorin being racist um, i assume it's thorin yeah there you go it's the they're bringing up the thing from 2014 kind of eats or whatever so current information uh gross i won't be watching any of their dog shit content cool don't not worth watching this not one but two man children guess i can thank eliza for saving me my time by forcing me not watch analysis brain rot desk which no that's you skibbity toilet reddit user the ultimate man baby duo who's doing the backstage interviews donald trump there you go trump comparison put that on the bingo card as well for future reference trump comparison have a drink i will boycott this probably i well, spelt boycott right so we got two boy two people two whole people are boycotting the event can't wait for richard to choke a pro player backstage again if a pro player tries and attacks me yeah <laughs> I'll do it again, guys. I will not get beaten up in an esports event without attempting to defend myself. Correct. Yes, that, that's exactly what will happen if somebody tries to attack me. Yes, correct. Absolutely. Uh, anybody tries to attack me, I will be defending myself to the fullest extent of my capabilities. Uh, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Sorry. It's almost like the people trying to attack me are the bad ones. But that's fine because this is esports and esports fans are dumb. But I'll just let you know, yeah. 100%. I apologize for nothing. Um, and then Thorin is very annoying. Now, it didn't just stop there because we were announced as news. We were news making the headlines. Look at this. Thorin and Richard Lewis to team up on Eliza Masters' Ed's Poo broadcast. They've done it again. There I am. Richard, Richard Lewis Lewis. Right? No team. No winnings. Thorin. No team. No winnings. Right, Maui Snake, winnings and teams and stats. All right, so there we are. Okay, and what was weird was it usually HLTV's the worst, but no, look, I got a let's go with like three with like two extra O's. That's like that's crazy. See, look. Although, is this what hell looks like? <laughs> but look. <laughs> it's like yeah plus 10k viewers what a talent team 
Brad Bate, remember him? Remember the guy who posts about me all the time, posts lies about me on HLTV, the one account that's like... Oh, there's two accounts, actually, that are, like, really mentally obsessed with me over there. He's one of them. Unfiltered banter equals calling people idiots, morons, and other hateful derogatory slurs. Which, by the way, if that is the metric of a derogatory slur, he has used derogatory slurs about me. So, he's at, he's at least as bad, isn't he? But you can't ever criticise players, of course. But look, I mean, this men are back. <laughs> We're back. I want to say to all my brothers out there, good news. Men are back. We're so back, guys. We are back. The age of men is upon us. Fuck those elves. <laughs> We're back, men. And look at this. My understanding is that Thorin don't watch teams of this level. So they shall be learning prior to the event. Definitely do watch teams of this level. Giga Chad Thorin. But look, it was actually, I'd say, 70% positive. Maybe more. I wasn't expecting that. So, pretty happy all round with the way that went. And looking forward to working the event in like a couple of weeks or whatever it is. And if you click on the event itself, uh, you'll see the teams that are confirmed. There's still some to be, uh, you know, invited uh, directly. We don't know who it's going to be. But look, X7, Ariel, Alu, Yuho, right? That's going to be that's going to be fire playing on finished soil. We've got the Ents lineup. <laughs> that is going to be announcing a stand-in, I believe. We got Bait with Head Trick. 9Z, low-key, could win the event. And obviously the favourites, Mongols. Everyone loves the Mongols. So, you know, when we do our pre-show, I think there's plenty to talk about there, actually. So, it's not as bad as people are saying. They make it sound like it's just all local teams. But, you know, obviously happening at the same time as an Intel uh, qualifier, you know, you are going to be limited in who's going to attend. But I'll just be there having fun, working with my bros. And, uh, you know, I, I like, it's ridiculous to imply I don't know who these teams or players are and have never watched them play. And wouldn't, like, want to if they were playing, you know. So there you go. Now, that was 70, 75% positive, wasn't it? So where would I go if I wanted something negative <laughs> to happen in, in my life? Well, the answer is always dota and as i've said i would do i wanted to work uh, a big um dota event and here i am i'm doing this uh i am told actually hang on let me get this right yes now it's valachia i think i've said wallachia like with a hard a right but it's uh valachia right so I'm doing the season two of this. I said to PGL when they put me on for the CS circuit for 2025 and 2026, like put me on the Dota circuit as well. And they said, look, tell you what, what we'll do is we'll put you on our next big Dota event and see how it goes and see if everyone vibes with it. Now, I have no idea behind the scenes if like some Dota talent do didn't want to work this. I mean, it is very close after TI, so I assume... There are some who just want to have a break. I don't know if there's some Dota talent who aren't there because they don't want to work with me. Because remember, I did say to some of them that had posted, you know, virtue signaling stuff publicly, like, why are you working at Saudi, though? So I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I do know uh, that there's a number of people I get on really well with there. Uh, like Shiva, obviously, I've known a long, long time and always been in her corner, even when the community used to treat her like fucking dog shit. Um, I've been at events with Shiva before. She's super cool. I really like Shiva. Um, Slacks, Sir Action Slacks, uh, is like someone, he was one of the guys on my bucket list. I, uh, have always wanted to work with him because I, I just love his fucking manic, demented energy. And I think we're very similarly aligned in the way we like conceptualize, you know, what makes good content, what makes a good show. And I think he's one of the best. Um, kind of like sideline reporters slash, you know, crowd workers across all of esports. When you do that kind of job, when you do like crowd work, 
you have to go into it like Trey. You know, Trace does it really well as well. Stunner. You have to be willing to look like an idiot. It's like very high risk. You know, performance. You have to be willing to look like an idiot because you never know what they're going to say or what's going to happen or how awkward it's going to be. You know, you don't know if it's going to be a guy dressed as Renekton answering every question saying, I am French. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. And so the great thing about Slacks is he rolls with it better than anybody else. Like, I mean, he just. He just fucking owns that shit. And so I've always wanted to do an event with him because throwing over to him in the crowd, like, it, you know, it fucking, it would, ex it excites me to, you know, think about what prospects could happen, what kind of like little content we could come up with and what we could make work. Um, in terms of the desk, uh, I know Lacoste and I mean, obviously I've never worked with any of these guys before if memory serves me correct apologies if you've forgotten i've only done i think the two other dota events uh, and they were not particularly sizable um but uh, i i like the cut of their jib uh, i love fear obviously remember him as a player um and i think uh probably what i'm gonna tr i'm still gonna i the, the, the i wanted jenkins there he was like also on my bucket list and because i think i can make him the kind of like you know manic energy on the desk guy but um i'm gonna i'm gonna sit down and talk with them all when i get out there i, get, I fly out there a few days earlier and i just want to basically i've got some like plans and some ideas but i don't and i, and I do want to do things differently i'm gonna put my stamp on the event i've talked about it in youtube videos and stuff uh, you know i want to do esports broadcasts like their sports and i want the desks to be like that and everybody's doing it the way that i said to do it like fucking eight ten years ago you know if you look at what you've got now at sky sports with you know the 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 overlap and, and gary neville all the people on their podcasts you know gary neville roy Keane, jamie Carragher, they're the ones on the desk now and they're just cross talking and arguing and it's energetic and it's like super compelling to watch the the days of doing desks like question answer 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 question answer 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 here's a graphic talk talk uh thank you for that now let's go to a break I, I, they don't work for me they've never worked for me i like to like toss conversational grenades onto the desk and see who's going to jump away from them who's going to jump on it who's going to let it blow up you know like I, the, that's the kind of thing i want to do and so it's a shame you know effie effie's good as well um but i love all of those guys that i've got nothing but respect for all of them i'm really excited to to work with all of those guys over in the casters uh again i mean you know od pixel and and, and fog no introduction needed there they are legends of their craft um and super excited to like throw over to them but uh no suns fan which this is what suns fan was talking about that he wasn't going to be there at Valakia. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I, my favorite caster at the moment, um, and this isn't to be disparaging about anyone else. I'm not putting anyone else's work down. But I think that my most... In when I think about all the games I've enjoyed over the last 12 months, who was casting them? It was lyrical. It, it was all, pretty much always lyrical. Like, like his energy is fucking crazy. And I, I had the pleasure of working with him in um, an event we did together in Vegas. And uh, lyrical is, like, fucking so good um, at what he does. And, you know, you, I could see he had all of the components there. But now he's just, like... He's just in a flow state. And so, and I, I know Cinder, and uh, last time I talked to Cinder in, in person, I remember it distinctly. I think the interview might still be on my channel, but um, I interviewed him at a Gamescom when uh, it might have been like 2012, 2013. And he was still a player. And Cinder and I love. I, I love the chemistry he has with Suns fan, but I think lyrical Cinder and can definitely work. And I just love Cinder and's like super dry delivery, really good analysis, just great. So it's going to be good to see him again. And obviously, we've got some remote casters, uh, which is a shame because I would have liked to have met uh, B Cop and obviously Black as well uh you know which is like wow like there's a there's a name from the past um so it's like su i'm super stoked about it you know i i think um there's only like one or two names i would have added there and it would have been the perfect event f for me um having uh shiva as a relief host as well because it's quite a long event you know i would have um 
you know, so I'm going to get some time off here, which I'll probably need because I'm going to have to study a lot. But um, the big idea I want to float when I get out there uh, is I want to do like a pre-show like we did for the major where it was like a sports desk and we were talking about all the big narratives because we've just had the TI shuffle, right? And the TI shuffle has been fucking crazy. And um, there's so many like interesting stories that happen. I feel sorry for the players a little bit because like there were teams that were already like breaking up the minute they went out of like ti and they had like days to get like new contracts and new lineups together everything's a bit chaotic everyone's standing in puppy's gonna be back playing uh, that's fucking sick uh the goat so i'm like uh i, I want to do like a show watch out for all of this stuff that's going to happen here because it's it's a long event and I, i've never seen that kind of thing done on a dota desk i mean, you know i'll be i won't lie i haven't watched religiously every dota event but i watch all the big ones and it's like just a sit down little podcast kind of style you know round table all talking about stuff getting everyone's opinions about you know what to watch out for this guy you know i think that'll be cool i'll see how the analysts feel about it and if they want to do it but i'd really like to do that um and to the person in chat store brand coke saying bring artesi on for some guest analysis i think i was the first guy to do that uh i had him and sumail they were analysts at the dota event i ran for uh, um in vegas we did the event uh in vegas and i and i, I had them uh in as guest analysts which was like uh, really it was, they were super nice guys and really cool to work with so you know that was uh, that was an idea i had i thought like that would be really good so anyway very happy about this very happy about getting an opportunity to do this and i'm sure the dota community are going to be very happy uh about me being there because as you know if there's one thing uh that we can say about the dota community uh it is that they are super friendly super welcoming super gracious and forgiving and definitely not just a bunch of entitled mewling children definitely not so let's see let's see how we went down over there shall we let's see again have the bingo cards deployed top comment is just that richard lewis huh all right choke point we're already off to a good start loader somewhere is already feeling lewis's choke i don't, don't know workshop that one champion of hell in a cell thank you performance for being the defender of my honor in that thread uh, appreciate it he croaked earlier the shit that's the other thing from the bingo cards obviously uh comparing me to the comedian richard lewis pretending you don't know who i am that kind of thing uh so have another drink for that one pretty funny considering he tore into several of the dota talent for attending Riyadh, calling them hypocrites awkward reunion by the way nobody there got tore up so perfect can walk in walk in with my head held high like a champ and Thank you, Domineering Drake. And he was right. <laughs> I was. I am. Might not be pleasant. But. Uh, somebody knows me from the good old days. Dr. Gonzo himself. Probably a cadred reader. Fantastic. Uh, they talk about why uh, Cinderin and Sons fan uh, weren't there. Cinderin without Sons fan is a crime. Uh, Lyrical's going to do uh, a great job. Uh, Richard Lewis Loader is sweating. Very emotional moment to see R Richard Lewis host Dota events again. I'm getting all choked up just thinking about it. Get a load of this guy. That's kind of good. I like that one. Then we get into it here, right? Why invite the guy who hates Dota and all Dota talents and doesn't even play the game? So, I, you know, I've got, um, let me tell you, actually, I'll quickly just look at my Steam account. I'll let me, it's not a lot, but I've completed the tutorial. I've got 4,273 hours in Dota. It might be the most played uh, game on my account. It's not like, I don't have like 10K hours or anything like that. But it's like, oh, it's 4,200. So, so you know, I've completed the tutorial. Uh, we won't talk about behavior score. <laughs> it ain't good right now. It ain't good right now. In fact, I haven't been able to type <laughs> for 50 games. <laughs> So, <laughs> and that's for the best that's for the best i'm just i'm just in the bubble i'm in the vacuum man i'm in outer space that's where i'm that's where i that's where i belong listen if if you don't want to get out the jungle when it's time to group up mate you're getting lit the fuck up every single time no apologies i will say the most heinous shit i will say anything to try and snap your brain into the reality of the game we're in 
because like th there is there, th there was probably a patch in the distant past like a decade ago right no that's too long but like say seven years ago okay you get kicked out of lane you go jungle you catch up right there's no such thing as neutral items obviously but you just have to hit creeps but creeps used to give you more xp and gold so you could do it you stayed out the way you evaded you put down defensive wards you farmed in the jungle you caught up and then maybe we could get a good team fight together and that was back in the time when you didn't have 50 million fucking buybacks and, ta and and 50 million fortifications one team fight was all it took so all right you've you've, you've got 0 and 3 in lane go in the jungle catch up let's try and get that fight going that is not viable anymore that hasn't been viable for years. Hasn't been viable for years. You fall more and more behind if you just stay in the jungle and you can't find lane farm. It, it cannot be done. And so you see people who are still hardwired to believe, oh, I'll just get six slotted and then we'll win. And it's like, yes, but while you're getting six slotted slower than the opponents getting six slotted, we lose. There is no late game for you to be the hero for. And they never get that. And you try, you try, you say to them, you say, look, mate, can you get out? The, you're not going to win if you just hit jungle creeps all day. Like, we've got to try and win a fight. I've got to smoke. Let's go. Let's do this. We can get a pick. Look, he's showing, in the, he's showing on the wave, right? And you, you communicate like that at first. But eventually, when that person stays in the jungle, stays hitting creeps, is on the opposite side of the map doing nothing, not even taking lane farm when everyone is showing on the map, you have to call them a cunt. You have to call them a cunt. You have to call them a dickhead. You have to call them a fucking herald scumbag. And you have to scream into your microphone phone uh to make them feel bad it's the only fucking way it's the only way to play dota i'm afraid i'm sorry it's built into the game it's not toxic it's necessary so yes i can't type or talk anymore <laughs> and and that's uh, yeah exactly i i have the moral high ground every time i don't care oh but you're taking it a bit serious it's just a game dota is not just a game uh, anyway, why about the guy who hates Dota? So I don't hate Dota. I hate everyone who plays Dota. <laughs> I hate the Dota subreddit. I hate how every TI you just cry and cry and cry. Everything you get isn't good enough. Uh, Valve don't care about the game they care the most about. Um, I hate all that entitled bullshit, obviously. Um, I have no problem with the Dota talent. Work many events with them. Love them, respect them, love their work. Uh, and do play the game. Uh, anyway. Richard Lewis. Somebody says he doesn't hate Dota, doesn't hate the talent, and plays the game. It's the game he plays the most. He has said this often. And then, so, what I love about people when they're wrong on Reddit is, and, and just in esports in general, honestly, he's just an esports fan. They, the way that they just, they just fucking, like, you're wrong. And they go, yeah, but what about, the, what about this other thing I said? Yeah, but can we, can we still talk about the way you were totally, no, we move on now. We move on. He regularly bashes Dota and shits on the talent. He regularly bashes this subreddit. He has been critical of Dota talent taking the Saudi bag, but he's been critical of talent in other games, if not har harsher. Yeah, he's largely avoided talking about Dota and Saudi. Besides, they already took the bag over there. He's been much more critical of game devs for allowing Saudi to run their tournaments, especially Riot Games, who claimed were not affiliated at all with this, despite the fact there was Riot personnel and Riot overlays tournament uh, realm needed to run EWC, so it was demonstrably false. Uh, and I can't blame him for being critical of Reddit. You've seen the dumb fuck takes in here. Somebody replied again. He comes back. Imagine being this upset because someone doesn't like the guy whose dick you want to suck. Dude has bashed Dota every chance he's gotten and literally choked to play it. So now we're adding, we're getting back to the layer cake, right? You know, the falsehoods, the Richard Lewis iceberg. For that alone, he should never be allowed at a Dota event again. The situation was more nuanced than that. Oh, really? What, the me choking of Leia? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, it's also worth noting that Loader came to look for RL in the backstage room of production, where he, as someone who was not part of the production, should not normally be allowed to enter. But it's way funnier to say that the defenseless 27-year-old child got choke slammed into the ground by the reigning Hell in a Cell heavyweight champion, which is true. This is Sir Belvedere. He's talked about me a lot. He's like, I don't, I can't really make out where his head's at. He appears to be a beloved community member, but he makes these like really long verbose posts about me whenever I'm brought up and says that I shouldn't judge. Reddit is, he says this all the time. He makes this point. When Reddit does something, like for example, when they attacked Frankie en masse, when they ganged up on a pregnant woman, essentially, uh, when they've done it to Shiva, when they've done it to Moxie, you know, other people I know, right? And it's weird how it's always women got to take their licks, isn't it? It's weird that. 
We're, it's all, almost as if there was something at play there in the Dota community. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, Sir Belvedere always says, no, the threads on Reddit, made by real people expressing their real opinions and engaging in real off-Reddit behavior, they are not the Dota community. The Dota community are all the people who play it who never use Reddit. It is only the people you cannot hold accountable. Excellent point, mate. It's a total fucking brain dead. Like if the if the if the main forums where people congregate to talk about the game, if that's not representative of the community, what would be? Just brain rot. But anyway, he's at it again. I have openly called out Richard many times in the past. Yep, you're mentally stable. But I do not believe he hates Dota the game or Dota talent in exclusivity. I think his constant dissing is of the Dota community, which is probably due to some bad experience he might have had in the past and then got reinforced when anything that went... No, it's just, it's just observable manifest behavior. Like, Frankie asked, like, a cheeky question to a coach. And for that, she was harassed for days while heavily pregnant. Uh, I, you know, I just don't think that's cool i mean i'm, I'm i guess i'm old-fashioned you know like harassing pregnant women don't really think that's something you should aspire to do but you know obviously in dota to be fair she was rude to a member of team spirit so you know guess she has it coming if he's willing to move past that and give the community ch i'll never give the dota community a chance again because you get chances from valve every single time and you know, you're gonna shit on me and you're gonna say i did a bad job hosting this event you're gonna make reddit threads calling me a cunt saying i don't know what i'm talking about you're gonna fabricate a fan fiction in your brain about how all the other analysts hate me and all the other casters hate me and it's super awkward and can we just have shiva you're gonna do that and that's gonna happen 100 percent. and i know that going in that that's gonna happen so but but, but that's fine because none of it's going to be based in reality so it's you know so no there, there's no second the community's trash you are if it wasn't for what's happened in cs2 this past year you would still be the most entitled man children on the fucking internet and with i will add a much higher percentage of incels than cs or any other esport i've ever seen like actual incels that detest women who are good at their jobs so i don't know I can't really, guys. I'm sorry. You you continually show your true colours every time. Yeah, you know, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Show me some nuance and some subtlety at some point on an issue. Maybe next time a battle pass comes out, don't cry about how it's low effort and it doesn't count. And then when they don't release a battle pass, say, where's the battle pass? You know, like, just act normal. Like, I don't know. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, he goes on. If he's willing to move past that and give the community a chance again, then I feel the community should also try to move past things and give him another shot. Because as far as a host and panellist, he does a good job. He needs to understand that the vocal minority on Reddit is not representative of the Dota 2 playing population in general. It absolutely is, and it's not the minority. He seems to understand this with CS. Absolutely not. I say the same thing about that. It come, but, but not when it comes to Dota for whatever reason. Um, just to answer putting the foxes, he said, if you hate the Dota community so much, why the fuck are you hosting a Dota event? It's for me! I want to do it. It's for me. I take pride in my work. I like the game. I like the sport. I want to make a contribution. I don't give a fuck about plebs on Reddit and what their reaction's going to be to it, but I will mine it for content afterwards and point out to normal sane people in the chat, look how ridiculous all of this is. But it is for me. It is for me. It is something I want to do. I don't have to do this. I don't have to leave the house. I don't have to fly to Romania to host an, a Dota event. I, but it's not, you know, I'm, but I'm doing it because I want to. So that's why. Last time RL popped around here, he was an asshole along with Thorin. No, no, no. What happened was Thorin made content in Dota where he interviewed, I think it was Seb. He did like a uh, ref reflections with Seb. That was like in three parts. It was like five and a half hours or something. And other content creators in Dota said, Stick to CS! Yeah. Why are players doing interviews with him? <laughs> fuck off, fuck off. Stay in your lane. You don't even know what you're talking about. Those questions were shit. And they all had a tantrum. And Thorin turned around and said, I'll interview whoever the fuck I want and make content about whatever game I want. And... Reddit got upset about it because you pick sides. You don't look at the argument objectively. You just say, I like this person. I don't like this person. Therefore, the person I don't like is always wrong. And the person I like is always right. And the, and the world is just so simple for you guys. 
that's what happened. Me, every time a video comes up, it's typically me reading fucking comments off you. Read it like when I did the Corpium Wars, uh, all of that, when I covered the ridiculousness of the cuckoo situation uh, that happened with the respect from all of the Chinese players. It's I'm always covering something bad. I'm not covering like roster moves or whatever. So yeah, you downvote it. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, would have been cool to make a Dracula themed tournament. You are right. I would have been there 100% dressed up as Bella motherfucking Lugosi, loving that shit, full on. Start of the show, I fucking come out with coffin, they put me on like a fucking thing. Ah, welcome. I would have fucking loved that, mate. I would have fucking loved that. But unfortunately, um, I don't think we are doing that. Why Richard Lewis? Oh my fucking God. Because he is the goat. Grabber of all throats. Not bad. Not bad. There was an attempt there. Respect the hustle. Why invite RL to anything Dota related? Dude has done nothing but talk shit about the Dota scene, pros and talent. <laughs> I've never insulted. I don't think I've ever talked shit about a Dota pro, except maybe, except maybe Jackie Lamal. <laughs> you know, yeah. But like other than that, and and we we worked an event together. He was on a desk with me. So. Uh, like, to be fair, I did say to him on Twitter, because what happened was, during the loader incident, right, Eternal Envy, like, posted a fucking Phoenix Wright meme. Like, objection! Where I said, like, oh, he approached me and put his head into my face and I pushed him away. And he said, loader is always wearing a baseball cap, so the peak would be pointing that way and he couldn't lean into your head, right? So he, he did, like, a forensic investigation of an incident where he wasn't there and posted it on Twitter. And I was getting absolutely fucking slammed at that moment. You can imagine what it was like at that moment so i did reply to him saying i think you should stick to jerking off to tentacle porn you fucking weirdo <laughs> um and that obviously that didn't go over very well with uh with him or his fans but we talked we we met in person in vegas i was out there i was like you know and uh he, he he was playing out there and i just said that was pretty fucking that whole thing was retarded wasn't it <laughs> Sorry. And so he just went, yeah, yeah, it was. And that was that. And then we, we, uh, we, he was on the desk. We had some banter. It was good fun. He's a good guy. Great guy in person, actually. I would go so far as to say. Nightmare in your, nightmare in your pubs. <laughs> but, you know, great guy in person. Um, so, you know, that's the only player I think I've ever publicly insulted. That, like, I've never expressed an opinion about, about any player, really, because, you know, I recognise to some degree it's kind of not my place. I am just but a fan. Uh, so anyway, um, he's done nothing but talk shit about the Dota scene, the pros and talents for years, and you invite him to your Dota event. And then it's like, what are you talking about? Richard Lewis talks shit about anyone. His football manager vids are, oh boy, very British. <laughs> right? What? What is that? What does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Why are you referencing the football manager vids? And um, what's... I am British. <laughs> I am, for good or ill. And then look, someone wrote... This is performance again. His FM videos are in character, so take everything with a grain of salt. Statements made by Ricardo Castro, flamboyant Cuban refugee, may not align with beliefs held by RL. Same goes for Ian Armin, authoritarian, half Ugandan, half Scottish manager, with the dream to manage Celtic Glasgow. The, the the Richard Luniverse is is deep and rich. People understand it. Shout out to Ian Army. No love for we we didn't do enough of Peter Gammons uh to get to get the course. Uh then probably took less money and was available. Nah. Getting the bag on that one. Sorry, break it to you. Fully bagged up with PGL. So bagged. Fuck this event. Last time I heard about him. He was talking shit about people working for the Riyadh Masters. He hates Dota 2 players also. He must be desperate for money if he took this job. I don't understand his relevance here. He always shit talks about Dota and is somehow in CS. I just remember him writing for Breitbart News. Can't still believe this is called journalism. I mean, he's all over the place there. By the way, Breitbart is uh, obviously not Bright Bart. Uh, Bright Bart is an alternate timeline where Shakespeare was a white supremacist. <laughs> Racist Shakespeare.
Don't read a fellow. It gets a little spicy. Love that. Bold move hiring someone whose most notable interaction in Dota history. Remember, I've hosted Dota events. It is assaulting Loader at a LAN. But there was a pog from Pretty Boy Gangster. Although I'm saying this, you have Nick's as your profile pic, so fuck you. <laughs> but thanks for the pog. But fuck you. Fuck you, Knicks players. Excited to see old Richie Lewis doing Dota again. Nice. Did Richard Lewis beat up all the other desk hosts? There's a based in there. Probably should put based has to be on the bingo card. Not a fan of RL being here at all. Dota's got good talent already and good upcoming. Why this turd? Yeah, because I'm, I'm just a legend. I just get the opportunities, don't I? What else have we got here? This is great. I am very new to the Dota esports world, but all these people look exactly like the kind of losers that I would expect to comment on Dota games. Now, there's something going on there in his brain where he is commenting on, like, like you're commenting on a forum about Dota games. You're not even getting paid to do it. So, what kind of loser does that make you? Richard Lewis is known to be a huge asshole. I hope this stint remains a one-off. Uh, stint, by definition, can't be a one-off. Can it? You fucking cretin. Maybe you meant stunt. Don't need people like him in the scene. Really glad Richard has finally realised CS is a shit game, as all FPSs are, and joined the superior RTS camp, prompting an argument about whether or not Dota is a real-time strategy or a MOBA, where the evidence is Gabe Newell calls it an action RTS, and they reject the MOBA term got to be high iq to be in there right so not as good didn't go over as well uh a bit disappointed there was also there was a little bit on um twitter let me get the official announcement over there but it, the the twitter event was pretty uh pretty good um there was this uh this is from thomas hansen uh, a Danish guy. So basically, I'm going to call this now. He's an Astralis fan who hates the fact that I have brought Astralis to rack and ruin by pointing out all of the fucked up shit they do. Calling it now. Common PGLL on that Richard Lewis. Get that piece of shit out of here. We don't need people that harm other people. Then somebody posted the bait or mental retardation meme. And then he said, ha ha ha, funny meme. Nah, I just don't want people that have proven themselves to have a violent past to be in our community. On top of that, all he does is create drama in a scene, and that is not needed. 100% an Astralis fan. Absolutely seething about the fact that I've caught all of his all of the shit orgs actions. And there was this. Just vomiting. Get that looked into. But in general, on Twitter, it was okay. So... Back in the game, doing a Dota event, and then following it up with a CS event, with my old chums, uh, going to be in Romania and Finland, uh, which is great. Two, two of my favourite places to visit. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, and I'll just say as well, it does mean, from a housekeeping perspective, obviously there'll be a reduction in content uh, during that time. I'm going to try and queue some stuff up for the Substack, but the YouTube will probably be pretty quiet um, during that time period, depending on how many VODs or whatnot we get queued up before I go. But yeah, uh, I'm going to try and stream uh, a bit more for the rest of the month so we can queue up some content for Griff to work on. But yeah, half of, the, half of October, and then obviously... I think people can probably intuit that I might be at another big event coming up soon. That also will take out a lot of November, probably. So we will uh, we will wait and see how it goes down. But yeah, basically the last third, I'm going to be doing lots of stuff externally and traveling and you know doing all that kind of shit. So just keep an eye out for it, and hopefully the uh, Dota event goes well. And I get to do more of it. But, you know, just looking forward to doing a fun CS event where it's like, you know, low stakes. But we're still going to treat it seriously. But we're also going to have a lot of fun. Try and make it entertaining. Uh, so do um, tune in.